what's up with you? I'm fed up of those troublesome trucks all day long. They've been trying to hold me back and bumping me hard while I've been going down hills. Did your brake van not help you? Brake van? About as useful as a matchbox. He was happy to help those trucks. Hmm, that'd be that little spiteful brake van again. I did tell the fat controller not to rebuild that brake van, but nope. Wouldn't take advice from me. Uh, but we should be grateful to the fat controller in one way. Why is that? Let me remind you both that the fat controller gave us free a second chance. Just like that spiteful brake van. If it wasn't for him, we'd all be in a scrapyard. Oh shh! Makes me shudder to think about them yards. Well, my driver told me a story about an engine called Midland, who once lived on soda a long time ago. A long time ago on soda, when the railway was very small, but when the traffic started to increase, the fat director, later the first fat controller, started to buy more powerful engines, until the first tender engine on Sodor Midland ended up working in little branch line in the countryside. Oh driver, my parts are hurting. I don't think I'll be able to get up this hill much longer. You're in need of major overall. Your parts are badly worn. I'll speak with manager later on. So Midland did his best and worked as hard as he could manage, making sure people got to their destinations on time. He needed to stop a few times to catch his steam, but it became more and more often until he no longer was running to time. Oh, I'll, I'll be ready soon. Aye, you will be, said his driver sympathetically, but knowing in his mind that the news from the manager was not going to be good. What did the manager say about my overhaul? I'm sorry, old boy, but the manager says there's not enough money to overhaul you. And with less passengers using this line and going by bus instead, because you're no longer running on time. So what's going to happen to me? The fat director has decided to overhaul and rebuild an engine called Henry, and from selling you, he's going to put the money towards Henry's rebuild. So your last train will be tomorrow. Midland was indeed sad at the news, but decided if tomorrow was going to be his last day in service, then he was jolly well going to enjoy himself. That night, Midland's driver made some phone calls to his sister, who was a nun at St Midland's Monastery. They were all very keen on railways. Midland, you got so much steam in your body, you're fit to burst. No driver, I'm fully ready for service. Let's wake up the countryside. Midland did just that. His pistons pumped hard and his connector was rattled. He stormed up the hill. People all over the valley could hear him. Midland was having the time of his life. Go on, old boy, show everybody what you're made of. Well done, well done. This is nothing, I'm just getting started. That evening, Midland had one last trip down the hill, when his driver stopped him. What are you doing, driver? We've got to go to the works for me to be withdrawn from service. Rubbish, Midland. I've been your driver since just after the war, and I'm not letting you be scrapped. But won't they be expecting me? Don't tell anybody, but I've got Edward to take a wagon with an old steam boiler on instead of you. We're going to tell them that we use some of your parts, and that's all that's left of you. But where, where am I going? You're being saved and hidden in the grounds of St Midland's Monastery. The driver had arranged with the signalman and other railway staff were willing to slip away.
until they arrived at his new home, when they quickly put his fire out and covered him snugly in blankets, and placed him in his new shed, saved from the scrapyard. You can't leave the story there, what happened to Midland then? No one really knows. Some say he's still waiting there to be found. Midland was indeed still safe in his shed, and the nuns of St Midland's Monastery kept him a secret so he'd be safe. One day he'll be found, but until that day, well, that's another story.